Hey, welcome to another SQL Minute, and in this episode, we're going to talk about calculating uh, fiscal year. I'm going to quickly show you how you can do it with a case statement, and then we're going to wrap up with a user-defined function. But before we get started, let's just re really make sure we all understand um, the difference between a calendar year and a fiscal year. So typically, a calendar year starts in January and goes through December. That's how it works in the, the western part of the world. Uh, so a calendar year takes the year of the last period, right? So December 2019, my calendar year is 2019. Now a fiscal year can start in any month and then goes for 12 months. So in my example here, I have a fiscal year starting in July and then it goes through June 2020. In this case, the fiscal year for that period of time would be 2020. What I've done here, in this timeline is also visualize that so that you can see I have the calendar year starting in the month December going all the way out to December and you can see the um, fiscal year okay I mean the calendar year, excuse me so below that I've done the fiscal years where you can see they got a fiscal year that ends in 2006 and you know presumably went past in time here I have 2020 ending in 2006, going all the way to July, and this is uh, fiscal year 2020, because its ending month is in the year 2020. So that's kind of how this works. So hopefully this is going to help you understand um, the interplay. And now let's get into the SQL. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the fiscal year would be for April and also for September and I have some sample code to do this so I'm going to bring that in in steps here so here's the, the variables I'm going to use to as test data uh, so here's the April test data and here's the September and then I am going to bring in our formula to calculate the fiscal year and I will now explain this Okay, so the idea here is is that the scenario is that you would have a um, case statement in your select, and what it's going to bring back to you is whether essentially the fiscal year for the enrollment date. How this works, and this is, this is the tricky part, is the enrollment, we calculate the month of the enrollment date, okay? And then based on that month, we either add a one to the fiscal or to the calendar year or we leave it alone so if if you look at our example here and let's look in um, it'd be the calendar year 2020 the trick here is is what month is my enrollment date in if my enrollment date is in a month that is less than seven so it's between one and six then I am in fiscal year 2020 because my period, the June, which is the end of the fiscal year, resides in the calendar year 2020, right? So in this case, all I need to do is return the year of the enrollment date. So far, so good. Now the trick's going to be when we get into an enrollment date that's past June. So we're in that, I guess it would be the beginning semester of the fiscal year. So that would be 07 through 12. In this case, I can't just take the year and call it the fiscal year because our definition for the, the year for the fiscal year is, is the year of um, the last period, right? And the last period is way out here in June of 2021. So what I need to do here is I need to add one to the um, year to get my fiscal year. So let's see how this works. And to make this better, I'm going to do a select and we'll do um, month at enrollment date and then the year so you can see the components. All 
and I'll just add, you know what, I'm going to just add these right into this statement. Alright, let's get rid of this. So we're going to get the month, the year, and then the fiscal year. So the month is four, the enrollment dates um, year is 2000, and the fiscal year is 2020. Let's see how this works with the logic. So we, we know that when our month is between one and six, that we are going to use the calendar year of the current period, and that's 2020. So we're good. All right, so now let's change this to September and then run this. So now my month is nine, my calendar year is 2020, and my fiscal year is 2021. So how's this working? All right, so I got nine, and what we've said is, is that our fiscal year should take the, um, should be the year at the end of the period, right? And so if we look at the end of the period for my fiscal year, that's in June, and at this point, I'm in a 2021 calendar year. So that's the year that comes back, right? So I'm using the calendar year function to bring back the year. And then depending on the month, I'm adding one. Make sense? Okay, so this, this works good. And if you only have to do it once, then I would say you could roll with the case statement. But what you'll find yourself um, getting into situations is where you will use this a lot, okay? And if you don't have enormous amounts of data that you're working with, like data warehouse scale data, then you probably can get away with using what I would call a um, user-defined function to slip into your SQL. So I'm not going to go into how to necessarily use the function. I just want to let you know that they're there for you to use. And the idea is, is that the function can accept a parameter, this one I call date one. And then what we're doing is we're really rolling it through the same logic, right? So this case statement here is the same as this case statement. And I roll that parameter through the same logic and then I return the result. So now instead of having to have this big glommy case statement with all this logic exposed in every SQL statement I write, I can encapsulate it into a function called fiscal year and then just pass in like fiscal year parenthesis enrollment date. So I guess I'll, I'll, sh I'll just show you what that would look like real fast. If we were to do that here, it would be, it'd look like that. And then this would call that user defined function that I'd set up, do the calculation and pull back the right result. So I hope this has helped you understand how to calculate a fiscal year. They can be very mind-bending. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to address them. Have a good day.